November 17, 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come, when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before the end happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord Perseverance will secure your lives. On May 13, in the year of the Great Jubilee 2000, Pope John Paul II asked Angelo Cardinal Sodano, the Secretary of State, to announce the substance of the third part of the Secret of Fatima, together with an interpretation. The narrative spoke of the Holy Father passing through a big city, half in ruins, and half trembling with halting steps. Afflicted with pain and sorrow, he prayed for the souls of the corpses he met on his way. Having reached the top of the mountain, on his knees at the foot of the big cross, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. After the assassination attempt on his life on May 13, 1981, it was inevitable that Pope John Paul II should see in the secret his own fate. He was very close to death. He attributed his survival to Mary. He claimed that it was a mother's hand that guided the bullet's path, and in his throes, the Pope halted at the threshold of death. Cardinal Ratzinger, the future Pope Benedict XVI, concludes the theological commentary. This only shows that there is no immutable destiny, that faith and prayer are forces which can influence history. Commenting on the prophecy of Fatima, Cardinal Ratzinger explains, It should be kept in mind that prophecy in the biblical sense does not mean to predict the future, but to explain the will of God for the present and therefore show the right path to take for the future. These words of Cardinal Ratzinger are a helpful guide to interpreting the readings of today, especially the gospel that is a prophetic and apocalyptic discourse of Jesus. Luke is not concerned here about the signs of the end of the world, but about the proper stance of Christians 
as they live their present reality. The persecutions of the future characterize their situation at the present. There is, therefore, a need for patient endurance because the assurance of gaining eternal life is stronger than the test. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. At the close of the liturgical year, when the reading speaks to us of the end of the world, how does the thought of the future judgment affect your decisions and choices for the present? How can future judgment be a guide to right living?